Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Shalom. <laughs> so we have recently um, tried to be uh, more faithful in asking people to come forward if God is actively working in your life. We want to hear the stories of what God is doing. And um, this is a little bit, this sermon is a little bit about um, uh, an inter interaction I had. I was praying through the headlines um, pretty recently, and there was a lot going on. Um, Cuba, Haiti, South Africa, um, just the pandemic, just so many things going on. And my heart hurt praying through all of that. And just the, the thought that Shalom is missing came into my mind and it just kept echoing and it was like an earworm for the whole week. Shalom is missing. And I was thinking, you know what? I should probably look into that more because I don't really know much about Shalom other than as Ed said, it means peace. If we go to the next slide, it means hello and goodbye, just kind of like aloha. And um, the, the other things that I do know just off the top of my head were um, Hebrew is read from right to left. I know that there are no vowels, so if you're hooked on phonics, good luck with that. And uh, it's a deeply nuanced language. That's something that I've heard from people who know ancient or early Hebrew, ancient Hebrew, the, the Hebrew from the Bible. And I usually, and in my mind, it's only in my own mind, it's like it's smugly. They smugly <laughs> tell me that it's deeply nuanced. You wouldn't even understand. It's <laughs> one word in Hebrew is like paragraphs in English trying to explain it. So shalom is missing. So. I went, like any good Christian woman would, I opened up my Pinterest account, and I looked <laughs> to see what, what shalom meant. And it gave me a very good start. Um, you can kind of see how um, early Hebrew kind of looks like modern Hebrew. We've, we've got some, some design similarities, but it was the early Hebrew that I'm going to focus on um, for explaining shalom. So if we go to the next slide, it's um, the Hebrew letters shin, lamad, vav, and mem. So let's start with shin. It's designed to look like teeth, like very good dental work. It's the act of chewing, tearing, destroying, um, consuming. Um, it's also re referred to as fire, but it's, it's destruction. Lamed is um, the pictograph of a shepherd's staff. Uh, you would pull sheep in, you would push sheep away, you would use it as a weapon if something was attacking the sheep. The, the person holding the shepherd's staff is the, the leader of the flock, so it means authority. Vav is a picture of a tent peg. Um, it, the, the Y wouldn't shape, so if you tie a rope around it to hold the, the tent down, um, the, the rope would not slip off. That's why you have sort of that little Y shape at the top. And then Mem is water but not the nice, let's have a drink in the desert kind of water. It's designed as waves, like the mighty sea, the chaos, the storm, the flood, negative water. <laughs> it's chaos, it's also destruction. So when you put these together, shalom means to destroy the authority attached to chaos. So even the letters themselves are not peaceful in my mind. <laughs> um, shalom is facing that chaos and having victory over it. So it is a bit, as the word is, spiritual warfare. 
In Ephesians 6.12, this is what reminded me of the word shalom. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. That's what shalom is about. So I saw that on Pinterest. I found out more. I got at different resources. Yes, I did the research. But then I was thinking, OK, well, what would a rabbi say about shalom? So I looked into uh, Rabbi Robert Icahn. And if you're a history buff, um, you might want to look into his life. He's fascinating. He worked in the civil rights movement in the 60s. He shared the stage with Billy Graham. He was all over social justice causes all through his life. And a rabbi in Houston, he was also an author and a very popular speaker. And he once described the difference between peace and shalom. One can dictate a peace. Shalom is a mutual agreement. Peace is a temporary pact. Shalom is a permanent agreement. One can make a peace treaty, but shalom is the condition of peace. Peace can be negative, the absence of commotion, where shalom is positive, the presence of serenity. Peace can be partial, shalom is whole. Peace can be piecemeal, but shalom is complete. It's like, OK, so shalom and peace, not quite the same thing. And the nerd in me wanted to research more. OK, so I found out all about Hebrew root words. And so there are no vowels. Um, in modern Hebrew, there's like little dots all over the place to indicate where the vowels would be. But early Hebrew, the Hebrew of the original scripture, has no vowels. So there's groupings of. Um, letters to create the roots of words, and then you just need to learn how to pronounce them properly. So the root in, in our language is the SH, the L, and the M. So what are the w other words that go with shalom? So shalom is peace or well-being and good health. Shalom, change one letter, to restore to full restitution. Shalem is whole or wholeness. Shulam is it was paid for in full. Meshalam is paid for in advance. Mushlam is perfect or perfection. And Hishtalem, it was worth it. And that gave me chills. It should seem like the cliff notes of the New Testament. And it is. <laughs> um, in Isaiah 9-6, we hear about, um, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. And the trans it, this comes from Sar Shalom. So shalom is a name, the holy name of God, um, one of his many, many names. And God's entire redemptive plan is based on shalom. So that brings us to our first point. God is shalom, and God wants shalom with us. It's his name. It's his plan. So starting in the Old Testament, shalom is broken in the Garden of Eden. And the many covenants in the Old Testament is the attempt to have shalom between God and his creation. Shalom is redeemed with Jesus, um, Romans 5, 1 and 2. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And I um, kept the early Hebrew word of shalom in the side just to keep reminding us of, of the meaning of it. Shalom is the end goal. 
if you read Revelation, shalom is when we are finally restored with our Father. I, it's not only the grand plan, it's also the minor plan within our own lives. In John 16, 33, uh, I have told you these things so that you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. So the second point is God wants us to have shalom in our lives. Whatever your personal chaos is, whether it's health or finance or, I don't know, career, children, whatever the chaos is in your life, our Heavenly Father wants good things for us. We are children of God, and he wants us to have shalom in our lives. But we are not able to attain that peace for ourselves. Only God can bring it for us. And God promises the qualities of shalom, the wholeness, the completeness, the soundness, the health, the safety to those who look to him. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> I was feeling kind of lonely up here. <laughs> thanks. No, thanks be to God. Um, Philippians 4, 4 through 7. Rejoice in the Lord always. So whatever our circumstances are, we, we can find joy. And I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. So if you have anxiety in your life, prayer and gratefulness is what um, is a solution to that. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, just beyond what any human could comprehend, God's love and care for us. And the peace of God that transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Now, this is where we come into another translation thing. The, the phrase, guard your hearts and minds, is, uh, comes from a military term. And it's not just a sentry guarding you. It's like being in protective custody. God keeps us in his protective custody when we're his children. Third point, God wants us to have shalom with each other. In um, 2 Corinthians 13, 11, and right before I got up to speak, I realized I put the English Standard Version instead of the NIV, so sorry, not sorry. Um, <laughs> finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Strive for full restoration. Encourage one another. Be of one mind. Live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. So that full restoration, that wholeness, that shalom, repairing broken relationships, broken hearts, whatever is broken around you, having unity in the church, speaking encouragement, um, Proverbs 18.21 that was brought to my attention recently, and it's a good one. So look it up yourself. I want you to have the blessing. <laughs> um, shalom is a blessing. In um, modern Israel, when you greet someone, you say shalom. But it's not just shalom. It's, it's inquiring how your shalom is. How is every little thing in your life? Our, our, how, is, how is your family, how is your spiritual and mental health? And it's, it's asking, may you be filled with a complete and perfect peace and be full of well-being, or may health and prosperity and peace of mind and spirit be upon you. That one word, that one small little word means so much. 
So beyond just having a simple wish for peace and happiness, this word suggests a state of fullness and protection, overflowing and inner joy and peaceful serenity. Speak shalom to each other. Pray for shalom for each other. Don't let shalom be missing from your life. Do I have more notes? No, that's it. So, <laughs> I'm going to uh, pray us out and invite the, the band up. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your goodness and your words. Lord, thank you for encouraging us to encourage each other and to to have that love for each other that you want for us. Lord, I pray for shalom on everyone here, everyone listening. Lord, you are so good. In Christ's name, amen.